In the field of aviation, air traffic controller and pilot come across a large variety of unusual situation, each differing from other in a unique way and require handling in its own way. The pilot's immediate priority is to ensure the safe flight operations, which includes the flying of the aircraft, completion of checklist drills, the quick assessment of best available alternate course of action and communicate the decision to the air traffic controller. Controller is expected to identify the nature of emergency and offer the best possible matter to handle the situation using his wisdom, knowledge and information on the subject. Objective while dealing with any type of emergencies. First, to act with utmost speed. Second, to take prompt action to save valuable lives and costly aircraft. Third, act as a guiding tool to those involved in such operations. An emergency is declared when an aircraft is experiencing problems and there is a reasonable certainty of a threat to the safety of the aircraft or its passengers, as well as where emergency assistance is required. In the event of an in-flight emergency, pilots call Mayday or PAN to air traffic control to alert controllers to the severity of the incident. A Mayday call indicates an aircraft is in grave and imminent danger and require immediate assistance. Controllers immediately alert ARFF services as well as local emergency services with details on the incident to enable them to respond appropriately and provide information and assistance to pilot throughout the emergency phase. A PAN call is used to describe a less urgent situation. In this case, controller provide information and assistance to pilot as well as informing airport rescue firefighting services or local emergency services as necessary. A priority landing occurs when controllers reschedule aircraft departures and arrivals to allow an aircraft that might have a problem to land as soon as possible. Pilot, while handling any emergency or difficulty, will follow this principle. He will first aviate, navigate, and last priority will be communicate. So pilot will try to evaluate the problems using a technique, diagnose the problem, assess the available options, decide the best course of action amongst the available options, uh, divide the workload, he will assign the task, and he will review about the actions taken. Pilot will communicate to the aircraft crew and air traffic controller about the nature of problem, about the intention of the crew, time available with them, and any other supplementary information which they think that uh, it will be helpful for the crew and ATC. ATC will work on the principle of assist. A stands for acknowledge, emergency message, as for separate the traffic, silence, impose silence on his control frequency, inform pilot emergency, uh, airport emergency management team, support the flight crew, and time. He will allow the flight crew sufficient time to manage the emergency. Classification of emergency. Air traffic controllers are, uh, are playing a key role in assisting aircraft in distress. Controllers are expected to identify the nature of emergency and opt the best possible method to handle the situation. Air traffic controller declares the emergency and activates the airport emergency response team. Emergencies are classified in three, local standby, emergencies, and accidents. Local standby. When an aircraft approaching the airport is known or is suspected to have developed some kind of defects, but trouble is not such as would normally involve any serious difficulty in effecting a safe landing. This is called local standby. Full emergency. When an aircraft approaching the airport or is suspected to be in such trouble that there is imminent danger of accident is called full emergency. Few examples have been given, like priority, minus snag in aircraft, one engine inoperative, bird hit, but not to the serious extent, all operations are normal, smoke in the cockpit, 
suspected bomb on board, fire warning light on, engine overheating, suspected or actual fuel leakage, seriously sick person on board. Then emergencies are such fire in any part of aircraft which require immediate assistance, explosion on board, fuel shortages or any other reasons which are indicated by the captain. The controller's response to an emergency situation could be patterned after the assist memory aid. A stands for acknowledge. Ensure that reported emergency is well understood and acknowledged. If the controller is in doubt, he will reconfirm with the crew the nature of emergency. He will not make any assumptions. He will acknowledge the aircraft call and observe any request made by them. He will separate and hold other aircraft at appropriate path clear of emergency aircraft. He will try to move the traffic, other traffic on other frequency and he will provide dedicated service to the emergency aircraft on his frequency. If that cannot be done, he will try to impose radio telephony frequency signs to, uh, to other aircraft. He will inform the crew of emergency aircraft about the suitable aerodrome, minimum safe altitude, weather information, and he will also notify to the appropriate authority or agency as per the emergency standard operating procedures. So, a certain the aircraft identification, type of aircraft, and type of emergency. Decide most appropriate type of assistance. Enlist the aid of any other ATS unit or services which may be able to provide assistance to the distress aircraft. Time may be required in order to resolve, contain, or improve the situation. Pilot will be busy in completing all checklists, whereas controller will be busy in alerting the uh, local uh, emergency and rescue aid agencies. Now we will discuss about the human factors involved during the handling of emergencies. Aircraft emergencies are stressful for everyone involved. Our initial reaction to the stress is so-called fight or flight. Communication problems. The crew may be wearing oxygen mask. Under stress, language problems may increase. Do not ask for too much information at one time. Try avoid talking too much. Use of standard phraseology may help to overcome many communication problems. High workload. There may be an extremely high workload, especially early on while completing the initial checklist and diagnosing the problem. The flight crew may experience very high stress levels. ATC should resist the urge to throw information at flight crew as this can have the effect of overloading the flight crew at a time when they have other priorities. Time distortion. Crew perception of time is compressed as they feel that they have an inordinate number of things to do in a very short period of time. Communication with ATC is low priority. As we know from ABA Navigate, then the last priority is communicate. The controller's perception of time is expanded so that it appears to them uh, appears to them that uh, more time has elapsed between communications with pilot than is actually the case. Post-event stress may occur. So all need uh, help promptly if affected. Remember, no two emergencies will ever be the same. The same situation can develop and can be resolved in an entirely different way. On a different occasions, as there are so many variables which we have discussed in human factors that can affect the eventual outcome. In all emergencies, our prime objective is to extinguish fire to save property and lives, to rescue the lives from and within the aircraft and to provide medical assistance. Thank you.